Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. Today, I'm excited to show you how to draw and paint this pretty little red cardinal step by step. This painting would make a beautiful household decor piece or you could paint it on the front of a Christmas card. But before we get started, I have an exciting announcement to make. For the past seven years, I have volunteered to help with my town's gingerbread house tour by making and donating gingerbread houses to display and then be auctioned off for charity. So this time, I have filmed the process of making my gingerbread house for a special bonus video for you to watch this coming Monday. But don't worry, I will still have my normal weekly watercolor tutorial as always next Thursday morning. All right. Let's get into painting and don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, for supplies today, I have a piece of watercolor paper. You can cut this to any size you want. I also have a pencil for my base sketch, two paint brushes, one medium sized round brush for the washes and larger areas, and a small round brush for small spaces and details. Now this is an optional item, some ordinary household table salt. Salt can add a really neat texture to watercolor paintings, so I'm gonna show you a little bit about what that can do today. I also have water, a paper towel, and of course, watercolor paints. For my colors today, I have a golden yellow, green, green mixed with a bit of blue for a blue green, red, red mixed with just a touch of black for a darker red, and black. As you can see, I've started creating a quick sketch of my bird and holly branch, but let's go over it together step by step. Let's start by drawing a large circle, or you can use a template for the main body of the bird. My circle is obviously not perfect, but that's okay. A good portion of it is gonna be erased for other things. Now in the upper right side, just a little off from the center, draw another smaller circle for the bird's head. Next, we'll draw one more circle off to the left side. This circle will be about the same size as the head, but draw the majority of the circle inside the larger circle so only a piece of it shows. Now let's go back to the head circle and add a triangle shape at the top to represent the crest feathers. Erase the center line on the head and add a small beak. Then erase any lines on the head that you no longer need. Next, we'll add a little oval for the eye and a small circle within that oval for a highlight. Now, cardinals have a black area on their face and neck, so I'm going to pencil in that area starting above the beak, going around the eye, down into the chest area, creating a point at the bottom, then back up to the beak. Then you can erase the lines going through the head and breast. Now let's add the tail feathers and we're almost done with this bird. Starting at the top of the remaining circle, draw a line at an upward angle, create about five rounded tail feathers, and then draw back down to the circle. Then erase any remaining unnecessary lines left on the bird. Now let's draw in a little wing on the bird off to the left side. I'm starting this by drawing a bumpy line slanting downward and then I'll curve it up and around into the body of the bird. For the last part of our bird, we'll add some feet at the bottom of the bird. These are basically just little moon shapes in a row, three for each foot. And there we have it, a chubby cute little cardinal. To finish off the base drawing, let's add a holly branch that the bird sits on. So I'm gonna draw some slanted lines stemming from either side of the feet. And this does not have to be straight, it's a branch. So some crooked areas actually make it more realistic. Now add six or seven circles for berries alongside the branch. You can even have them overlap the branch or another berry if you want. Then erase any extra lines. Let's add a few holly leaves alongside our branch and we will call this drawing done. These leaves should have jagged points alongside them and keep in mind that it will give your drawing more interest if you make some of them different sizes, overlap some of them, or even point some in a different direction. Thank you. 
It's finally time for the fun part. Let's see what kind of painting we can shake out of this brush. So let's start with the larger brush and wet down some of the background of our paper so we can paint a light wash behind the bird. Then using a very watered down black, so it's a very light gray color, add hints of paint to the watered down area and let it spread. Go around your drawing as much as you can, but if you paint into the lines a little bit, that's okay too. The background wash will be very light in value, so we can paint over any goobers you might make. If you feel your gray background is too dark, use your paper towel and dab off some of the color. If it's not dark enough, add some more paint. Now if you want to try a bit of salt texturing, now is the time. While the gray background is still wet, take a pinch of salt and sprinkle it onto the wet paint. Now just watch and wait until it's completely dry. When the paint has dried completely, rub and wipe off the salt and take a look at your awesome texture. Let's paint the leaves next using the wet on wet technique again. So wet down the leaf with some water and start adding some pure green color. You can try to have some areas that are darker and some that are lighter. Then add a little bit of blue green to enhance the dark areas. If you need to make some lighter areas, rinse and dry your brush off on a paper towel and use the clean damp brush to soak up and wipe out some of the color. Repeat this process as needed, then continue to paint each leaf the same way. Now because these leaves overlap a little bit, I'm going to skip this one for a minute and move on to some different ones until this is dry so these two leaves don't blend together. Now let's paint the stem of this branch using the small brush. Start by painting the top of the branch with green and gently fade the color towards the middle of the branch. You can do this by rinsing and drying your brush and using a damp brush to spread the color. Then take the blue green and paint the bottom of the branch fading the color upward with the clean damp brush. In painting it this way, hopefully the outside edges will be a little darker in value than the middle of the branch. This will help give it the look of depth. Now I'm just going to take a touch of green and paint a thin vein line in the middle of each leaf. Now it's time to paint the berries. Now I have done two tutorials in the last two weeks with red berries and I have explained in detail how to paint them. If you've seen those tutorials, I'm just painting them the exact same way. If you haven't seen them yet, make sure you to check them out by clicking the link above or at the end of this tutorial. Now for the finishing touch to our painting, let's paint our bird by first wetting it down with water everywhere except along the throat where we want the black to be painted in later. Then take some red and start applying it along the tail first, moving towards the head and then down the body. The paint will probably start getting lighter as you move downward, but that's okay. It can make a really cool effect. But if it starts to get too light, add a little bit more red at the base of the tummy. Thank you. 
Now while the paint is still wet on your bird, take some of that dark red and add a little bit to the wing and the tail and you might even want to add just a touch to the top of the head and the bottom of the tummy. Then just let that light red and the dark red blend and mix together a little. For this next part, we need the main body of the bird to be dry almost completely, but not quite all the way. When it seems like it's not as shiny or runny, then start carefully applying some black along the neck and the head, going around the eye and the beak. The goal of having the red paint still slightly damp is that then the black will very slightly blend into the red so that it doesn't have such a harsh line between the two. It will look a little more soft and natural. When the black area we just painted is dry, then let's paint the eye. Now this can be tricky to make it stand out because the eye is black and everything around it is black. So the key here are the highlights. Make sure you leave a white circle in the center of the eye as well as a white sliver at the top and the bottom of the eye. Not only will this help it stand out, it will look more realistic. Now take some black and paint black dots on the top of the feet. Then wipe your brush off and using a damp brush, push and spread some of that paint downward through the rest of the foot. For the beak of the bird, we will paint that in a similar way as the feet by applying yellow paint to the base parts of the beak and then using a clean damp brush to spread the paint upward. For our finishing touch on the bird and our painting, take your small brush and either the red or the dark red or both and start applying some thin wispy lines along the bird's breast, head, wings, tail, and anywhere else you feel like it needs it. But be careful though to not overdo it. And here is your pretty little Christmas cardinal. I hope you had some fun painting today. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.